This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Meanwhile, Yuji's just going out like he's just going to the grocery store. Don't even, but no, this is fine. This is normal. This is absolutely acceptable behavior to have. What on earth? This is, this is, this is the worst thing I've ever played, isn't it? No, it's not. <laughs> it's just very different. <laughs> the rumbling of the wheels takes on a different tenor. We've left the building. Let me tell you something, Michiru. Death isn't the end. First of all, the, the people that you've left behind have to try and say goodbye. The idea that you can just vanish into thin air is a load of self-centered crap. I understand that you want to disappear, but before you die, I expect you to go through a proper procedure. You can't wrap your life up neatly all by yourself. That's naive, irresponsible thinking. This son of a... So she's not dead right now. I don't know what position she's in, but Yuji's gonna kill her later after putting her through... He's probably... Well, realistically, maybe he won't go through with killing her, but I hope not. But at the very least, even even if he hasn't killed her and is not going to, this is like 20 different ways of being so effed up right now. Like, this... <laughs> I fully expect if Mitru actually lives and comes out of this, for like her and every other person to be like, Yuji, this is not acceptable, and to just like abandon him. And you know what, that's kind of the reasonable reaction. I guess Yuji's aware that I'm conscious, but no matter how hard I try to move my mouth, I can't answer him. Yuji, you don't have a car. Maybe he got an Uber. It seems to be growing gradually more difficult to breathe. Am I going to suffocate inside this box before I get burned to death? The thought floats idly through my head like a soap bubble. I wonder if Yuji has a license. A moment later, it pops and vanishes. Since I found myself in this box, I've begun thinking about a whole lot of really pointless things. Things I wouldn't have even thought about before to fill my head to the brim. This must be what it's like to be paralyzed. My body's asleep, but my mind's awake. I'm immobile, as if bound hand and foot, although there's no rope wrapped around me. I'll bury you in your favorite place. My body jerks up inside the cramped coffin, helpless to resist the shocks of transport. Maybe this is what it feels like to be a chocolate sitting in a box of candy? You were always talking about it, weren't you? Now it'll be your official place of death. All that was- all that about the cremation was a lie. This was the plan from the start. Well, I mean, yeah, you don't- again, you don't get a coffin and get cremated. Incidentally, your body can't move because of a hypnotic suggestion I gave you. Um... That is not how hypnosis works. Not to worry, though. It won't last much longer. I repeat, that is not how hypnosis works. I thought he might have, like, injected her with, like, a drug that would paralyze her. That would actually make more sense. Another thud echoes across through the coffin. The sounds of the outside world grow fainter. I don't really have any regrets, but... I wish I could have seen Yuji's face at the end. And I wish I knew what my face looked like when he saw it for the last time. This is... world. Shed for. Have yourself a nice sl In there. Yeah. Me. This is so effed up. Like, I don't even know how to process this. My body can't move. I can't speak. I can't see a thing. The inside of my head throbs painfully. Did I get bumped against the box at some point on the way here? An unexpected wave of powerful exhaustion rolls over me. I can't even think about whether to resist before I'm dragged down into sleep. Or so I think. I mean, the darkness is just as thick whether my eyes are open or shut. I don't have any way to track the passage of time. Did I sleep for a while? Maybe I just closed my eyes for a moment? There's no way I can tell in here. I can hear the sound of my own breathing from multiple angles at once. It's echoing off the walls of the box. I make up my mind to try and speak. My voice works. Does that mean my body can move as well? As an experiment, I try to lift up my arm. It was a small movement, but my elbow bangs against the wooden wall right away. I can move, but it looks like I'm going to have to do it pretty carefully. This... 
is probably one of the worst things that you, one of the worst situations you could be in. Like, alive and conscious in a casket that's underground and you can't escape and you can barely move at all and you just slowly suffocate. That's got to be one of the worst ways to go out as well. Not sure if that would be better or worse than burning alive. Burning alive would be, like, faster but more painful. This would be slow and horrible. Especially if you're claustrophobic. Wow. Alone inside my box, I laugh at myself. Carefully? What's the point of that now? All I need to do is lie still anyway. I mean, I'm just going to die in here no matter what I do. I call his name, but the sound only makes it a few inches from my face before striking solid wood and rebounding back. In this terrifyingly cramped space, the four walls themselves almost seem like living things, consciously observing me. My banes cling to my forehead, damp with sweat. I reach up to fix them, baning my elbow against the wall once again. After carefully twisting my body around, I finally manage to brush the hair back into place. But nobody can see, not even me, so why do I even bother? My back's sticky with perspiration. It's clammy and gross. Really uncomfortable. Again, that should kind of be your last thing you're worrying about right now. As my dulled nerves slowly rouse themselves, I begin to notice a number of dull aches spread around my body. But it's not just pain that's starting to tug on my senses. There's also hunger. I silently mouth the words, I'm starving, to no one in particular. Maybe I'll die of hunger before my oxygen runs out. I wonder just how painful death by starvation is comparatively. Um... Starvation is one of the most painful ways to die, I believe. Also, one of the longest, because you can go for, like, over a month without eating. I think I saw some tasteless list about the most painful ways to commit suicide somewhere. But right now, I can't remember the details. Too bad Yuji isn't here. I'm sure he'd give a furrow rundown. Probably a little too furrow. Sweat trickling down my forehead is starting to get into my eyes. It stains. When I lick my lips, it leaves a salty taste on my tongue. What am I doing in here again? My thoughts are all tangled up like old-fashioned telephone cords. I'm thirsty. Of course I don't have any drinking water. I try forcing myself to swallow some saliva, but it doesn't do much good. <laughs> Startled by the sudden ringing sound, I end up smacking my arm hard against a wide w a side wall. I can feel my heart pounding furiously away. So her cell phone is still in here. Thankfully, it has battery. She picks it up. This is your captain. You've won a cruise. <laughs> can she even reach or answer her phone? Hey, Mitru, uh, where are you? Oh, you know, I'm just in a coffin buried underground. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Want to hang out tonight? The vibrations seem to be coming from everywhere and nowhere. The air resonates with shrill electronic chirping. After hunting clumsily around for some time, I finally discover a cell phone ringing right next to my ear. <laughs> it's it's like Abade. Mitru, I thought you were dead. Hmm. Sounds like you're still alive. Th this is some superhero level, super villain levels of criminal activity right now. The instant I hear his voice, I feel tears running down my face. What is this emotion? It's not relief, exactly. I can't quite pin it down. It's probably hatred for him doing this to you. This is your final choice. That phone can only be used to contact me. Just press 1 on the speed dial. You won't be able to get through to anyone else. And the other functions are disabled as well. It won't even display the time. If you decide that you want to live, call me. That's all. You even though I forced myself into a painfully contorted position to answer the phone, he's already hung up on me. Didn't listen to a word I had to say. I mean, that's just the way the guy is, yeah. But still, even at a time like this, the thought makes me smile a little. Th what?! This is... this is... madness. But at least I got to hear Yuji's voice at the end. Maybe it's better this way. I hug the phone close as though cradling a precious treasure, then close my eyes. So, Yuji, if she doesn't call you, or if her phone runs out of battery, or, like, are you truly just going to let her suffocate in there? Because that's very effed. Huh, guess I fell asleep again. I instinctively flip open the phone in my hand, and it's just like UG said, the time isn't displayed. What kind of a phone is that? Like, even the most primitive of cell phones I thought had clocks in them. 
I can't even guess how long I was sleeping. If you call 911, like surely that phone can call 911. There's no phone in the world that can't, I would assume. It's got, I've gotten so used to the darkness by now that the phone's LCD display seems blindingly bright. When I turn my face to the side to escape the dazzling light, I notice the letters everyone wrote lying next to me. With the backlight for illumination, I can make out the characters clearly enough. I squirm my body around for the some time to get into position, then open the first envelope and take the letter out. That's not how death works. Real touching letter there, Makina. チルチルと一緒に見たかった景色だってあります。すごく綺麗なのに、それを知らないままなんてダメです。まだたくさんのことが残っている。この場所を置いていってしまうなんて、それはいけないことです。今までありがとう。でもやっぱり。It's true. This is extraordinarily messed up. This this would be a good thumbnail, wouldn't it? The letter itself is a little weird. Yeah! You can definitely tell she was flustered when she wrote it. The next envelope I pull from the little pile is Omni's. Mitsuru <laughs> I think everybody knew that. だから、いつも無理していないか心配していました。大丈夫かなって思ってました。ミチルは自分よりも他人を第一に考えるようなところがあったよね。気づいていないと思ってるだろうけど、ちゃんとみんなわかってたよ。今はもう無理はしていません
みちる様へ私はみちる様とまた会えると思っています It's a letter from our friends. だから別れの言葉は書きませんみちる様のことを <laughs> Maybe Sachi is in on this, and that's why she was extremely calm during it. Sachi definitely seems to think that something's up. And Yumiko to a certain extent as well. As I read these simple words, I remember Yumiko breaking down in tears. It seemed completely out of character for her to get that upset. I always felt like she was keeping her distance from me. So why did she cry like that? Maybe because you two actually have a lot of similar issues. Not, like, they both are. They've both apparently lost a lot of people close to them, so. I realize that my hand is beginning to quake slightly. Even though I'm not exactly cold, my teeth are starting to chatter, and I can't make them stop. The letter wasn't that carefully worded or anything. None of them were. They scratched them down in just a few short minutes, after all. But for some reason, the normality of their words makes me feel like my heart's being squeezed in my chest. I won't be able to laugh with them ever again, or exchange hellos in the morning, or even have one of our stupid conversations. It all felt so normal before, but now it's gone forever. It's almost like I've only just realized that. The more I think about it, the harder it is to control my trembling hands. At first, it was a little more than a mild fidgeting, but right now I'm shaking so hard that it's almost like a convulsion. My own body feels strange and alien to me, powerless to stop the trembling. I just observe it dumbly. Even after a few minutes, there's no sign the shivering movements are likely to stop anytime soon. I decide to try thinking about something else. I wonder where Yuji is right now. What's he thinking about? He called me on the phone, so maybe he wants to see me again. Maybe he wants to talk to me again. I want to see him. I really do. But. In that instant, the light of the LCD screen vanishes as the cell phone abruptly shuts itself off. You wasted all the battery. I press the on button over and over, but the screen only lights up for a few seconds at a time before turning off again. And after a while, even that stops. The phone goes entirely dead. The one thin thread of salvation dangling down from above has just been completely severed right before my eyes. Now I really am all alone, deep inside of the dark, heavy earth. All of a sudden, my fuzzy thoughts snap into sharp edged focus. I've been floating along as if in a dream, but this all feels terribly real now. A distinct, vivid terror of death overwhelms me. <laughs> My hysterical voice echoes wetly, pointlessly around the coffin. Some part of me didn't really understand what dying meant, but after reading everyone's letters and losing my only way to contact Yuji, it's suddenly all too real, all too clear, all too terrifying. The fear has grabbed hold of my ankles, and it won't let go. I can't get out of here. I really can't. I'll never see the light again. I feel like I'm about to go crazy. I feel around the interior of the box with clumsy, panicked hands searching for some sort of exit. But of course, there's no such thing. There are places in the lid where the material feels slightly different, but nothing happens when I strike them. In the first place, I can't position myself properly in this cramped little box. The hard planks rub against me with every movement. I can feel the rough pain of torn skin, the hot trickle of blood oozing out of my wounds. Oh, crap. What an image. This is so messed up. <laughs> それなのにどうして今になってこわばっているのねえここまで来たら後悔しても遅いんじゃない A face exactly like my own floats above in the darkness before my eyes. Am I just hallucinating or has the other me somehow taken on form? 足り乱しても仕方ないじゃない
慌てても意味ないよだけどだって私このままだ死んじゃうそうねそれが目的だったんでしょ Uh, I'm pretty sure if she dies, you both die. わがままだってわかってるもうお願いここから私を出してごめんなさいそうしたいけど今の私は何もすることができない私はただ君と一緒にいるだけそうだよね私はやらなきゃいけないんだよね The ever me stares into my eyes, her face steady and calm, not even blinking. Kimi wa honto ni dare kara mo ai sare te inakata. Kimi wa honto ni dare kara mo hitsuyo to sare te inakata. Yoku kangai. Watashi wa ikte itakata no ni. Fui ni sore ga owatte shimata. Kimi wa gonna ni mawari kara ai sare te iru no ni. Naze inochi o somatsu ni suru? Good question. どうしない続けてきたからこれからもそうなるのが怖くて君をどうにかできるのは君だけだからそれが無理ならこのままずっと暗い闇の中にいなさい私は私だって心残りぐらいあるでも我慢してそうするしかないと思って誰かに期待されたいのなら誰かに消えてほしくないと思うのならまず君が自分自身に期待しなさいそして Believe in yourself but that's the place to start 誰かのためじゃなくて Yes! Yes, that is what I wanted her to understand. Don't live just for one other person. Live for yourself. Well, I mean, don't just be selfish, obviously, but you gotta learn to be able to live by yourself, you know? Don't be reliant on other people or dependent on other people. That way, if they do happen to leave you in your life, you'll still have something to fall back on. Live for my own sake? I've never even tried. I've always, I'm always working for someone else's sake, and always failing, always falling short of their expectations. Always a defective human being. In that instant, the phone begins to ring. Even though the battery was definitely dead, the shrill electronic warbling bounces around inside of the box. I grope around and grab hold of it. The screen and the incoming light are still dark, but the sound of the call continues as loudly as before. When I mash my phone in the general area of the answer button, the ringing stops. I slowly bring the phone to my ear. Who the heck is this? Oh my gosh, is this Jan? Did we give her our work phone? No, this isn't Jan. Jan has a slightly... She has a more scene sony voice than this. Who the heck is this? Is this girl from the backstory, is she still alive? She can't be. 
Mitra saw her dissolve into a bloody pulp on the street. No, that's... I think that's a different voice than girl. I don't recognize that voice. From now on. I haven't really thought about that so much lately. All this time I've been focused on enduring the pain from the festering, miserable wounds the past left me. Even when I met someone new, I'd find myself thinking about what happened before. Biting my lip when they weren't looking. What's the point? It'll be over someday. Yes! I timidly try to stretch out my hand. The door leading to the future is heavy and cold to the touch. I want. I, you know, I just feel like there was a better way of getting her to realize this than burying her alive in a casket and telling everybody that she's dead. Strain forcefully against the door and it opens before me. Really? How convenient. Leading me to this place. Who the heck? The voice takes my breath away. Even after all this time, I'd never mistake that voice. It's my friend, the girl who went to the other side. What? Is Mitsuru hallucinating this and she's about to die? Or is girl somehow miraculously still alive? The voice draws nearer, accompanied by something that seems to be formed out of pitch black mist. I draw back a step in fear. I don't hate you. I think it's dumb that we never learned this girl's name. Like, how hard would it have been to give her a name? A violet, a violet plume of smoke coils itself tightly around my arm. It's sharply cold against my skin, like fog rising from dry ice. Um, it's not an either or, girl. それはね。それは。あなたはもう死んでしまって、この世界にはいない人だからだよ。あなたと一緒にいることはできない。私は前を向いて生きなきゃいけない。いつまでも後ろを向いているわけにはいかない。私を忘れるっていうの。Yes, good. That's good. あなたのことは絶対に忘れない。でもこれ以上一緒にはいられない。わからないよ。私にはわからない。どうして一緒にいられないのかわからない。well, that's not what happens when you die. Painful me- Apparently we're in the haunted wasteland from Ocarina of Time now. Painful memories blow through my mind like a squall. For a moment I feel as if the surge of emotion will carry me away, but somehow I brace my legs and hold it steady. I seem to have picked up a phone at some point. No, 
I was holding this all alone. The battery's dead and it can't connect me to anyone, but right now it's the only thing trying to save me, trying, tying me to the other world. Okay, so that was the girl who apparently called us on the phone, except it didn't actually call it. It's just Michiru is hallucinating because she's dying. My hand finds the knob of an invisible door. True. And that's why I can't follow you on the road you chose. <laughs> well, life isn't fair. So this means it are we actually en route to the good ending? How 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 would this possibly lead to the good ending? Also, it seems like things are getting resolved, so we might are we finishing Mitra's route this stream? I don't know how much content is left. But it seems like we're definitely wrapping up towards the end. I try to leave, but the knob doesn't want to turn. It's so stubborn, it feels like it's fused in place. Even so, I keep right on twisting at it with all the strength I can muster. But that's no good either, so I start simply hitting the door as hard as I can. More blood spills from my hands with every strike. But I keep right on going without so much as a flinch. Well, there's this great thing called marriage. Somehow I managed to force open the lid of my prison. In the next instant, a mixture of shockingly cold air and damp earth streamed down into the box. How did she break open the coffin? Unrealistic. Zero out of ten. It's as if my body's being pressed down under the palm of a giant. I can't move. I spit out the dirt that's fallen into my mouth and try to open my eyes. I've never seen the sky from under the ground before. Makes me feel like the seedling of some bizarre plant. I wanted to gulp down a whole lunful of fresh air, but I can't manage that either. The hole I was buried in doesn't seem to be as deep as I thought, but hunger and exhaustion have left me too weak to push my way free. If she managed to break open the top of the casket, A, that must have been a loose casket, and B, she must have like just barely been underground at all. Because dirt is heavy when there's a lot of it on you. Somehow managing to speak, I struggle to crawl up for the heavy, wet soil. But no matter how much I strain my tired muscles, I can't move. Riving like an insect, I desperately try to get at least my face above ground. But my endurance has already run out. Drowsiness, hunger, and loneliness push murderously down on me. This really is it for me. I'm going to end here, drowned in mud. I couldn't manage to kill myself when I wanted to, and now I'm going to die when I want to live. Seriously? What an idiot. See? Told you I was stupid. But if I have to die, I want to die touching the world. I push my fingertips up through the dirt with my last ounce of strength. From a neutral point of view, it must look like the feeble stirrings of some puny little sprout. One that's picked an odd time of the year to surface. 
Deep in the soil, I slowly, weakly extend my index finger up toward the sky. I touch the outside air for the first time in who knows how long. It's startlingly, wonderfully cool. Only a few centimeters of my finger is in contact with the world, but it's enough. It's enough to tell me that I'm alive. Soft, quiet raindrops wet my fingertip. I've already cried myself dry, so maybe the sky is shedding tears in my place. My eyelids fall like melting wax running down a candle. F uh, falling shut so heavily that it feels like they'll never, ever open again. I begin to slowly, peacefully disappear. Hmm? That was quick. It's only been 11 hours since I buried you. After all that pig-headed whining about wanting to die, is this all you've got? No guts, woman. You are an actual psycho. Yeah. Hi, Mishiru. Well, at least we're there to help her out. But also, wow, we are the worst human being who has lived in this game. I pull Mishiru up out of the earth. She's got a somewhat surprised expression on her face. Yeah! No shit! <laughs> Understandable, I suppose. This isn't a dream. It's reality. How are you feeling? Come to your senses yet? Even if I tried to explain the whole thing, I doubt the girl would understand right now. I decide to keep it simple. I knew it would turn out like this. That's why I did what I did. I knew all along that you didn't really want to disappear or die. Really? Because you got a weird way of showing it. So I sat here and waited for you to break out of that shell. I was just your assistant on this one. Here. Lend a hand. Here to lend a hand, in the most literal sense. Don't act like you didn't just try to kill her. I strongly squeeze Mitra's trembling hand, like she definitely could have suffocated in that box. I was waiting here the whole time, and I was planning to keep on waiting as long as it took for you to come out of that box. Exactly! Also, I'm pretty sure she would have suffocated after 11 hours in that tiny box. Who knows? Hadn't thought about it. But I couldn't exactly wander off. This guy is the worst. If that, if that ventilation tube I quietly installed it for you had gotten clogged with bugs or something, you'd have suffocated in less than 30 minutes. Okay, so we did have a way for her to breathe. Still an absolute psychopath. There was no plan B. Kind of a half-assed strategy, granted, but it seems to have worked out. You literally could have killed her, and you let everybody believe that she was dead, and you think that you're the good guy. You are the worst. No, 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 do not turn this into, oh my gosh, you waited 11 hours for me after he did this to you. That's right. That's right. I locked you up inside a box and stuck you in a hole. You expect me to complain about my stomach grumbling? Anyway, half a day's nothing to worry yourself about. Barely worse than getting stood up for a date. This guy is a... I... I know I'm just repeating myself, but this guy is a psychopath, and he's the worst, and I don't want Mitru to be involved with him anymore. She deserves better. Anyway, that's enough pointless back talk. Let's get going. That's right. That's right. Mitra's eyes had resembled dull, cloudy marbles for so long that I'd almost forgotten that they could sparkle like this. Do not thank him for what he did! He is not worthy of thanks! He is the worst human being that you know! Yeah, yeah, save it for later. This is so messed up. Ladies, if your crush does this to you, do not go out with them. Go to court, get a restraining order, get this guy in prison. This guy is a criminal. He is a terrible person. Well, well, this is all very sudden. Can't say I've ever had a woman covered head to toe in mud confess her love to me before. A valuable experience, to be sure. But a couple? 
Weren't you afraid of the end? Are you alright with the fact that we might have to say goodbye someday? Try hard at what exactly? I don't want to say that this is the worst relationship ever, because that's a, a deep hole. But this is not a good relationship. <laughs> Might be the worst in the game. I haven't seen the other ones. This is definitely worse than his relationship with Sachi. Wow. This is not okay in any sense of the word. I see. Sounds fairly promising. I'm getting the feeling we might be able to stay together for a good while. What now? Honestly, I got the message the first time. Well, it looks like the girl still got some energy left, at least. Hoisting Mishiru on my back, I slowly carry her down the road, leading back to the dorm. You did good, Mishiru. Welcome back to the world you belong in.